Foundry added a new feature called Scene Regions in version 12, which essentially lets you create areas that trigger actions. And I'm sure many of you are excited to take this feature out for a spin. However, Scene Regions and all of its intricacies can feel a little confusing. Let me run you through all of the aspects of Scene Regions, and after this video, you'll know exactly how this feature works. Hi there, my name is Afandu, and I run this channel called Dice and Easy, where I give you Foundry VTT tips and tricks with over 500 hours using this software under my belt. So scene regions are shapes that you can draw on your foundry maps and you can attach certain behaviors to. Note that this feature is only available in foundry version 12 and upwards. With that out of the way, let's jump into foundry and I'll show you how everything works step by step. All right, we are now inside foundry VTT version 12 and I have this map set up for us over here. This is a map from the Chepeku free map module. I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you would like to download that free module and get access to this very map. They make great maps, by the way. They have more maps as well on their Patreon if you want to support them that way. Phenomenal map makers. But anyway, now that we are in version 12, on the left-hand side, let me zoom in over here, we have a new control here called Region Controls. This is how you set up scene regions. After clicking that, you get a bunch of new controls. So let's go through these controls one by one. First one is selecting a region. So if you've already drawn a region in the map, you can select it this way. Then you have drawing a rectangle. I'll show you soon how that works. Drawing an ellipsis, so you know a round shape. Drawing a polygon. Now that means that you can make a shape, any shape that you want here in the example, for example, you can see that they're drawing a triangle. You could draw any type of shape, and I'll actually show you how that becomes very useful later on. Then you can create holes within shapes. Again, I'll show you how this can be useful for you in certain scenarios. Then you have a forcing snap to grid vertices. So if you want to force your shape to snap to grids, this can be very useful. And then lastly, clearing regions so you can get rid of them. And then you have this new thing here. So this is where all of your region I guess layers, in a way, are going to appear. It'll make sense in a second. So let me actually show you how to make a region. So let's go, let's say over here. Let's say outside here we want to draw a region for whatever reason. We'll then go over here and play, pick this the rectangle one. And then we just draw a rectangle. Boom. So this is how you do it. It's quite simple, really. I'll go through these settings in just a moment. But then we can just click Update region to have it there. Let's say we want another region with the same behavior as this one. We can draw it on the same layer here. So let's say we want it to be over here for some reason. And we draw another one here. And it's the same color, which indicates that it is the same layer. Now let's say we want different behavior somewhere here, for example. Then we can go up here and click create region and then go and select it with the left click. Now, when we draw something new by selecting any of the tools, it is going to go on that other layer here. And it's green, which not a great color against this, but it's fine. For the example, now you understand that there are essentially layers of regions that you can do. And the idea is that each layer, I don't think that's the real naming, but I'm gonna call them layers. Each layer has their own set of behaviors. And that way you can create multiple smaller areas or bigger areas, I guess, but multiple areas that have the same behavior and then different areas that have different behaviors. Does that make sense? Then let's go through the basic settings for a region. What are all the different settings, that, that window that you saw pop up there earlier? So I have this region selected. You can see over here it's selected. And the selection tool available, I'm going to double click on this. That is how you can open the settings for any region. Or you can go to this cog wheel over here and click that, it will also open this window as well. Those are the two ways you can get that same thing open. So let's look at what we have in this window. So first you have the name of the region. Quite simple. Uh, depending on what you want the region to do, you might want to name it in a certain type of way. Again, think of these as layers. So name your layers appropriately. Don't just call them layer one, two, and three, and so on, or region one, two, and three, because you will get confused. You will forget what each region does. So try to give them a descriptive name. For example, if this would be adjusting darkness, maybe you call this the darkness region. But anyhow, anyhow, 
let's continue next you have the color so you can pick a color for this you can put the the code directly here or you can click on this little thing and it'll open a color picker for you and then you can choose a color for yourself just to make it easier to color code things for example that green that we saw over here not a very good color at that point so we might want to change it but anyway back to the window elevation so if you want the region to have certain elevation on the map meaning that it will only affect at a certain uh height then you can put the bottom of the region here and the top of the region here so you can set a range if you don't set any range it will affect the map no matter the elevation of the token that enters it so it is the elevation of the token that enters it let's say we would put 20 to 40 feet and then if a token is at zero feet or it's at 60 feet the region will not affect them then visibility so this basically means where can this be seen so right now it's set to only on region layer that means that if i change the layer here it is going to disappear which you might want because if you draw a lot of these they can be a bit disruptive on the map again remember that you can set these settings per region layer so maybe some of them let's say some of them trigger traps for example those you want to be visible others you don't so you can do that anyway let's go back to correct layer here or the tool rather and then the other options are always for game master so this means no matter which tool you have selected you are always going to see these regions and then you have always for anyone which is the same but for all of the players as well again depending on how you want to use these different settings might make sense for you but this one we're just going to leave on only on region layer for now then you have shapes so this basically shows you all the different shapes that this specific layer i guess we'll I'll call that uh has and you can change their order you can change them to make a hole instead and you can get rid of them you can add new ones here from controlled walls as well then the big one behaviors this is where you add a behavior to your regions by themselves they don't do anything this is where you add stuff for them to do so you click create behavior and then this will give you a bunch of different things to do and once you choose it it'll give you some new controls for what to do with that specific behavior and then if you update the region behavior then boom it will be active but let me go through each of those behaviors now and show you what each of them does because those are the things that you're going to be interested in to make certain effects so the first one is called adjust darkness level and it does just that it changes the darkness level within that area now let's get rid of these example regions that i drew because they're not really what i want to be using right now so let me delete those let's say this room over here this one Let's say we want that to be particularly dark. Let's say there's a magical effect in it that makes it dark. Well, now we can take a rectangle, zoom in a little more, draw it over this area, like so, and we'll call this darkness. Remember when I told you to name things well? That's one of the reasons. And we'll change that color to be like a dark blue. I think it'll be a little bit more readable. We'll only have it visible on the region layer. That's fine, it doesn't matter to me. And then we will go to the behaviors, click the plus, adjust darkness level. We, I don't wanna give it another op name, that name is completely fine. Then, here we are. Now, behavior status, you can disable it if you want. Maybe you have another thing that activates it, for example. But right now we're gonna just keep it active all the time. There are different modes for the adjust darkness level. You have override, which means that it will take the current darkness value and replace it with, what, with whatever you tell it. You have brighten, which will do the opposite of darkening. It will make that area brighter by a certain amount. And darken, it will darken that area by a certain amount. Let's select override for now. And let's make it really dark so we can see the difference. Let's make it like 0.9. So it's really dark and update region you can already see it updated there right so it is now darker however a little hard to see because of how we have it set up so the tool is now the region is being shown a little hard to see but we can just change to another tool and bam now you can see that this part of the map is darkened 
And this can be a, a cool thing for you to do. Maybe you have cave. Maybe you have magical darkness that is blotting out an area. And then you can use this. Although for magical darkness, we'll have a little something else, which I'll show you in a bit. And yeah, that is how you can adjust darkness in an area. It's quite simple. Then, of course, the other direction is to brighten an area. That could be for, for another reason you might want to do that. But that's how simple this tool is. It's not that complicated. Let's look at the next one on the list, which is displaying scrolling text. Now, let's say we want to display some scrolling text. We'll create a new region. We'll draw some scrolling text over here for some reason. And we created another region. It's fine. We'll get rid of the other one. And we'll call this scrolling text. Uh, color is fine. Only orange layer is fine. We'll go to behaviors, click plus, and then we will go to display scrolling text. Here we are. Once again, you can disable the behavior here if you want to. Then we will have the subscribed events. It sounds a little bit complicated, but this is what it, it essentially asks you. What do you want to trigger the thing that happens in this scrolling text? You can put token enters, token exits, after token moves, so after a token has moved within that region, that shape, token moved in, so token has been moved into or out of, token starts a turn there, token ends its turn there, token starts its round there, or token ends its round there. Let's put token enters as the event, and you can put more than just one event, so maybe you want it to happen when they enter and when they exit, for example, you could do that. Text, hello world, nice to meet you. That's the text. The color is going to be, sure, it'll be white. Visibility, we can say anyone can see that, the game master can only see that, or uh, observers can only see that. That way we choose what happens. Then, do we want it to display only once, or every time? the trigger, the subscribed event happens. So there, I've created that. Now let's add a token that we can control. Let's add this vampire here. I'm gonna add the token over here actually because there was a wall there. So now we're gonna move in. And there you go, you saw the text scroll there. I mean, it was really small, but that's what that essentially does. So if we go back and then we move, then you see the text once more. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Let's do it once more. Hello world, nice to meet you. So that's a pretty simple thing that you can do with text. Let's look at the next behavior, which is executing macros and scripts. All right, I've come down here to create another region for us to show how macro triggering and script triggering works. So let's draw another area here right before this token so we can make it easy to see how it works. And I've named it all of them now because, you know, good practice and all that. Let's open this uh, bad boy up and go to behaviors, click plus and then select Execute Macro. So, again, you can disable it here if you want to for any reason, if you don't want it to be used anymore. Then you have the subscribed event. This is the same thing as with the scrolling text. You choose what is the action that will trigger the event. So we have region boundary changed and behavior status changed. So these are different from the scrolling text, but otherwise it's the same options here. So I'm gonna put token enters as the subscribed event, then, you are going to need the UUID of the macro in question. So I have a macro down here ready, which is roll 2d20. So I am going to open that up. Instead, I actually rolled it, my bad. Let's see, edit macro, so I can open it up. And to get the UUID of something, let me zoom in so you can see this better. You see this little book, this grayed out book icon here, that is actually a button and says copy document UUID. So if we click that, it shows above here that it's been copied and we close it. We go here, we hit control V to post it and then we click add document and boom, now the macro has been added here. I believe another way is also to drop the macro here. So let's try that out if we go down here then we drag and drop. That also works directly, so that's an easier way to do it. You can just drag and drop it over there. Then this asks, do you want that the macro is triggered by all users or a specific user with su sufficient permissions? I'm going to put everyone because I want any player that would go in this area to trigger this 2D20 role. There, we've updated that behavior. Boom. Now let's select this token 
and we're going to move up and i zoomed out so you can see this this area better and you can see the dice roll let's change the chat over here you, you'll see below me uh there you're gonna see a dice roll in just a moment so click on that go like that boom 2d20 was rolled and then you see the result just popped down so that's how that works of course this macro was very very simple but anything that is a macro or anything that is a script because scripts will work the same way so that way you can have regions that trigger macros or scripts only thing with scripts of course is that if you click the plus button here remember to choose execute script instead of execute macro so otherwise it's the same except you have to write the script directly in here but otherwise you know same deal it's the same way that it works and of course i forgot to mention this earlier you can have several types of behaviors in one scene region layer so if you want this to execute a script and also to change the darkness level for example you can do that that's that's a thing that you can do all right now that we've seen how macros and scripts are executed we're going to talk next about pausing the game all right where we went a little bit higher up on the map let's draw a new area so we can pause the game there near new region we're going to call it pause then we go to behaviors pause game add that and again you can disable it if you want and then do you want it to only trigger one so the first time that a token enters the region the game is paused but then if that happens again it doesn't happen or do you want it to happen every time it's up to you so then you pause, you save that, you update the region, it's ready there, we're gonna move over to our token here, and then once it enters it, it would pause. However, you're not going to see it now because I'm the game master. So this is very important to note that for game masters, it does not happen. The pausing of the game only happens for players. This can confuse you when you are testing this as a game master, but it, it doesn't happen for game masters the game master side the game does not get paused but i have confirmed and i have tested that if you are a player controlling a token and you move it in that area it will pause the game so don't worry that is how it, it does work as designed this is how it is designed to work so the game master does not trigger the pause players do but that's it it's very simple it is a very very simple thing next let's look at suppressing weather which is actually very interesting all right, so suppressing a weather effect. It does exactly what it sounds like. You, you draw an area, and within that area, weather effects are not going to play. Let me show you a quick example of it, and then I'll show you a cool thing that you can do with it with this map. So let's uh, draw a new area here. Boom. We'll call this weather. And then behaviors plus you go to suppress weather. That and it is going to ask only if you want it to be disabled. That's it, there's no other controls for this, it's very simple. Now then, the question becomes, how do you add weather effects? Well, that you do actually from the, from the scenes settings. So you right click on the scene, you go to configure, and here you go to ambiance. And in ambiance now, you go to weather effect. And there isn't a lot of weather effects here, but there are some, the usual ones that you'll want. We'll, we'll select Rainstorm for now. And then you hit Save Changes. It is going to reload the map. And now you can see that it is indeed raining. Let's unselect that. And you can see now that there is this square here where the rain is not being drawn. It basically makes a hole in the rain or whatever weather effect you have. Now... This, of course, is very random here, just a square that doesn't do anything. What if we want this whole building so that it doesn't rain inside the building? We can do that very accurately. I'll show you how. We go back to our tools on the left-hand side. We have to select the polygon tool, so the draw polygon tool. And now, when we zoom in here, we can actually start drawing the exact shape that we want. Now I'm gonna draw this, give me a moment, and we'll be back shortly. All right, welcome back. I am now just about to finish 
the shape that I draw. So let's double click to get the shape in there. And bam, now you can see that no rain is being drawn here. Let's change to another tool so you can see it better and zoom in. So here, for example, you can see that it's raining outside, but it's bone dry on the inside. Very nice, very cool, but you will notice one issue. It's also not raining on the inner courtyard, which is supposed to be outside. Now, how do we resolve this issue? We can do it easily with another shape. So we go back to our shape tool, select the weather layer, and let's see, how does this work? Is the whole area outside? Yes, all of this area is like an inner courtyard that is outside from the looks of things. Let's say it is. So we will draw a new polygon. So give me a moment as I draw another polygon over here. All right, welcome back. I've now drawn this other shape on top of this shape. What we can now do is go to the weather layer settings, then go to shapes. And now we can see this polygon shape is being highlighted over here. We're going to hit make whole. So now that polygon area that we drew, it lets the rain in. So now if we go like this, now we can see inside bone dry but then in this inner courtyard which is outside it is raining so that's how you can use that make whole feature to create some interesting weather effects but that's not all for weather effects because i want to showcase a way to get even more weather effects but it's a little bit tricky so that's why i want to show you how it works so there's a module called fx master i've made a tutorial on fx master specifically earlier on my channel i'll leave a link to it in the description and probably on the screen right now so you can check that out if you want a more in-depth guide to fx master but what fx master essentially allows you to do is do more weather effects among other things so let me activate the module now and then i'll show you how you can get the fx master weather effects also to work with these scene regions all right i've now activated fx master which you can now see from this little button over here that says effect controls now normally you would do weather effects through here let me actually turn off this effect from here normally you would do weather effects through here you would go to uh, particle effects and then you would go weather let's say we want uh rain want rain and we want to make it quite intense there but as you can see if you do the effect this way the scene regions don't work it does not respect the scene regions so this is not the way to do it there's also the filter effects which is a filter on top of the whole screen but that also does not work so the way that you do this is the exact same way that you do with the regular weather effects you right click on your scene you configure the scene you go to ambiance and then you go to weather effects and now you see a bunch of more options here you see the basic options here and then you see all of the effects master options labeled as such here you bats birds crows eagles clouds, fog. So let's go with fog, for example, and then we'll add a fog effect. Now, the only downside to this is that you cannot adjust the parameters of these weather effects as you could normally through here with the weather effect in particular, let's say fog, for example, you have all of these controls here. Unfortunately, when you do it through the settings over here, you can't adjust them, but this is how you can get FX master weather effects to work with these scene regions as it were as you can see here the fog does not affect the inside and affects the courtyard this is how you can get that working then let's talk about teleporting tokens through scene regions so scene regions allow you to teleport a token when it enters into another scene region area now there's two types of teleportation with scene regions. You can teleport within a scene. So let's say for example, that your token goes from one floor to the other, because I know that there are maps that have several floors on the same map and they will be on the same scene, or you can teleport tokens between different scenes. So let me show you how that works. Let's say we want, if the token enters here, we want them to teleport over here. Just as a random example, it doesn't make sense maybe 
narratively here, but I just want to illustrate a point. So we're going to create a new region over here. Boom. We're going to call this teleport A, and it'll make sense in a little bit. And within this, we are going to have a behavior called teleport token. And now we actually need to update the behavior and update the region. We'll get back to that in a second. We need to create another new region layer. So we'll click that to deselect it. We'll draw it over here. And we're going to call this teleport B. Now, we don't need to do anything else with this if we just want this to be a destination and you can't teleport back from this. So it depends a little bit how you want this to work. But for now, we'll just make this a destination. So what we'll do is we will copy the UUID from this book icon here. Copy that. Update the region. We'll leave that as is. We'll go back to teleport A. Go to the teleport token behavior. And then we'll add the UUID here. And now it says teleport B. So now teleport B is the destination for this. So now, once we've updated that, let's add a token to show you how it works. We'll add Morthos here. And now when Morthos moves over there, Morthos should get teleported to the other area. Boom. Morthos has now been teleported here. Works perfect, right? But Morthos can't teleport back now. So maybe we want that to be a two-way street, so to speak. Let's try and fix that. We'll go back to our tools, and then we'll go to teleport A. We need to get the UUID for that, cop that document. Then we go back to teleport B, go to the behaviors, and then we add a teleport token behavior, and then we add the UUID there. Now, both of them should teleport each other. I think it only happens when they enter. Let's double check that the behavior doesn't get wonky and essentially get trapped in an endless loop. So back to our token. Now Mortho should get teleported to the other place. Does indeed. And moving in this area does not teleport Morthos. But if Morthos moves out of it and goes in there again, boom. So this way you could have stairs that teleport people. So now you can see how you can teleport within a scene. Let me show you how to teleport between scenes. All right, let's say I want the player to get teleported to this scene from our previous scene. This is also made by Chepeco. It's also in the free map pack I mentioned. Link is in the description. So now we are going to draw a new scene region in this scene. Drawing tool selected, let's say we draw a little rectangle over here, like so. And then we don't need to attach any behavior to it if we want it to just be one way. Again, you can do the same where you can make it a two-way thing, just like we did before. Then you will have to attach a behavior to it. But we, we just want it to be one way. So we will copy the UUID. Then we're going to go back to our previous scene. We are back here again now, and then we'll use teleport A now as the starting point. So we go into the settings, the behavior, and then the destination. I will remove teleport B, and I will add this one, which I did not give a name to because I was being naughty boy. I just called region. Let's click allow choice to see what that looks like. So now, after we've updated that, when Morthos goes there, it should ask for permission to go to another scene. Yes. Do you want to teleport Morthos to region in Antlier Canyon? Yes. Boom. Now we are in the other scene. So this way, if you have scenes that connect to each other that you want to teleport between, you don't need a separate module for it. You can now do it with scene regions within Foundry itself. Then the last behavior that I want to show you is toggling behaviors. All right, so the last one is toggling behaviors. Now, what that means is when we, let's say we draw an area over here. Toggle is what we'll call you. And we go to behaviors. Then we choose toggle behavior. Now, again, you can disable it here if you want. Then we need to choose an event for it. We're going to go token enters is the event. What this essentially does it is allows you to disable or enable the behaviors of another region. So let's say we want to keep this teleportation here disabled until the player gets close to it for whatever reason. So we will actually close this for now. So what we'll do is we'll go to the teleport A and actually we don't want to copy the UUID. That was a mistake I made earlier. We want to open the behavior and copy the behaviors UUID. So this will 
enable or disable a specific behavior in a specific region. So now, if we go back to toggle, we go toggle behaviors, and then we copy paste our thing over here. Boom, it says teleport token over there. Or we can disable it uh, like so if we want to. So now, if I were to disable, you can also disable a behavior over here, disable this behavior from here, because now it's not turned on. Then if we get, let's bring Morthos back here, then this is now disabled. If we move Morthos here, now this will be enabled. Of course, there's no visual indication for it, but if I go here now, I check teleport A, I can see that it's been enabled. So again, this could be useful for you, let's say, you, your players move into a specific area of the room, maybe there's a pedestal with an item on it and they move next to it, then the room gets plunged into darkness, for example. You could do something like that, or whatever your imagination desires. But this allows you to disable and enable behaviors with inside other regions with this region. Okay, so I promised to show you a little extra fun that is in version 12 that I think some people have maybe not noticed. So it's actually lighting stuff. I'll quickly show it here to you. You can actually create proper darkness now. So if I draw a light source, let's make it here. Normally before, you couldn't make areas dark so that tokens couldn't actually see through it. You could only make visual darkness, but not mechanical darkness, if that makes sense. Now you can do that. So I've drawn this area over here. I can double click it. I can go to the basic configuration and I can choose is darkness source. You can see it changed here. Now it's a darkness source, which is pretty, pretty cool. You can choose the, the color of it, the intensity of it, and the activation range, which that's basic lighting control stuff. So when this light is active, it can be active, let's say, when it's nighttime or daytime, you can fiddle around with that. Then you also have specific animations for darkness that is specific to it. You have a black hole, looks like that. You have a magical gloom. And you have a roiling mass. These are pretty cool. You can fiddle around with the animation speed and intensity and the other advanced options here to get some cool effects. And then if I select a token, I have to select Morthos over here because Morthos is a player character, you can now see Morthos' vision is blocked by this magical darkness. And if Morthos goes in there, Morthos can't see anything because it's a, it's a darkness that affects Morthos' vision until they come out of it. So I just wanted to show you this real quick at the end because I think this darkness lighting stuff is, uh, is pretty cool. So that's it. That's how scene regions work in Foundry version 12. Now, back to the end of the video. There you have it. Now you know how scene regions in Foundry version 12 work. What do you think of scene regions? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're writing that out, I would kindly ask for a like to the video and a subscription to my channel. Those small deeds help my videos reach more people. Before you go updating to Foundry version 12, you should know that there is one module that can break game worlds. Check out the video on the screen to learn the details of this module. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.